Hey guys, Zara here, and today bring you a video about whether you should be buying Grid Auto Sport on June the 27th. Hope you find this video helpful. Let's get straight into it. Grid Auto Sport is the final installment for Codemasters on the old generation consoles. It's uh, sort of a last hurrah, and it certainly has a bang that will bring smiles to the Grid fans. Listening to the community, they addressed many issues from Grid 2 and brought it back to its roots of Grid 1. The career mode is much improved from Grid 2, and it's a lot like Grid 1. Players progress up from tiers of uh, five different disciplines of motorsport and then they work their way up from level one and each level unlocks a new tier of their chosen discipline. So i.e. an open wheeler, you work your way up from Formula C to Formula B to Formula A. So uh, the Formula A is essentially the IndyCar and uh, Formula C is uh, F3. So uh, you work your way up in tiers and it's a nice progression. And uh, if you're like me, so if you really like open wheelers, like, uh, like you know you know me, I like Formula 1 uh, pretty much uh, above any other motorsport, then uh, you can tailor your, tailor your career and just do o uh, open wheeler and really get to the highest level on that on that certain di uh, motorsport discipline. Or if you're, you know, uh, if you like a bit of touring cars, then you can just, uh, fa uh, you know, work your way up on touring cars or even any street races or endurance. You can just tailor it to what you want it, want it to be. So every single career mode you do is completely personal to your tastes. And all in all, the career mode is definitely a lot better from Grid 2, and it's just a, a bit more fun because, you know, there, there's an aspect of not just grinding out races after races, but there's a bit of uh, choice in what you do in terms of even the discipline, even the tier you do it within the discipline. So just as I said, you can do IndyCar or F3, and also the seasons you do because there are different season events with different racetracks so you can kind of pick and choose on what you want to do ultimately you'll probably end up doing everything if you really want to experience everything but uh in at the beginning it's all you know personal taste so uh the career mode is definitely one to check out it is a nice chunky career mode to get your teeth into now this is a huge factor in buying a racing game, the handling. Now the handling is moved away from Grid 2, which was a drift best basically, and the fastest way around the corner in that game was drifting. Um, you know, you could just chuck it in, get the rear out, and you would go around the corner fine, and you would probably be even getting the fastest lap. But in Grid Autosport, that's not the case anymore. Of course, you can still drift if you want to. There's also drift events, but you know, during a race, you can drift around the corner in your McLaren or whatnot or an F3 car. But it's not the most optimum way to go around the corner. The best way, obviously, is normally, obviously, let's say in an open wheeler, you brake before the corner, you turn in, you hit the apex, and you go through the corner carrying as much optimum speed as you can through the optimum line of the corner to go the fastest way. And that is the fastest way for pretty much everything apart from drift drift events where you're meant to drift. But, um, yeah, you know, that's the fastest way around the corner. But if you want to drift, that's still an option. So players that like grid Two. I mean, I know there's not many, but there were a handful that liked Grid 2 handling. You can still drive that way, but it won't be the fastest because the Grid 1 way was the f is the fastest way now. You know, proper, just going through the corner normally. You know, maybe a bit of sliding here and there because the car is on the edge of its mechanical grip. But it is the fastest way. But, you know, definitely even trigger happy, you know, drivers can still enjoy the game and be a bit fast. But definitely it is much faster to take the optimum racing line. Um, but there are an array of assists as well that can be turned off as well that range from traction control, ABS, stability, racing line and even the ability to change camera away from the cockpit cam. So all this means a majority should be happy with the whole handling model and the whole way you experience the game because you can tailor it to what you like in a racing game basically. Looks wise Grid All Sport is beautiful. Malaysia at night is simply stunning and it is a real kind of surreal moment when you when driving through Malaysia at night time with all the floodlights on and it definitely is a uh, like last hooray for the next gen when it looks this good there is motion blur while in the cockpit cam to simulate the blur you would experience whilst driving at high speed so they do that very well and all the various camera angles for replays and onboards look great I even was able to make a whole trailer out of replay cams that if I do say so myself look pretty sweet so definitely the, the visuals on this game are right up there for, you know, pushing, you know, the last kind of bang for the uh, old gen and, you know, just ask questions on what they can do for the next gen in the next year or two. 
A lot of people will straight up ask if this game is like Grid 1, and in many ways, yes. If you like Grid 1, you will like this game. It's similar similar if you are, you know, if you are put off by Grid 2, then don't be put off by this game. It is drastically different from Grid 2, and it's a lot like Grid 1. Obviously, it's not slap bang like Grid 1. The career mode is slightly different from Grid 1, and I would say the online is a bit more improved from Grid 1, and the whole kind of, you know, the, the, the fact that it's full motorsport now, and there's not just made up tracks completely um there's a lot of real life circuits like spa francochamps you've got uh, abu dhabi you've got um malaysia they're going for real tracks here and the hockenheim sorry i forgot about that so they're going for real motorsport here so in a way it's actually improving on grid one um you know grid one lacked a bit of real motorsport tracks in a way so yeah you will enjoy this game if you like grid one and it is a lot like grid one so quick pros and cons, well pros have to be the career length and the variety as I mentioned before and the AI is surprisingly aggressive if, you, um, if, if you're vulnerable they will try and overtake you, they're not shy of you know really getting in there, getting their elbows out to try and overtake you if you're making a mistake or struggling on tyres in endurance for example. Also the fact there are so many assists to play with, the game can be accessed by a variety of players. Obviously, this may not be the biggest pro to some of you, and lots of you want a full simulation game uh, as races, but this game is not setting out to be that. This game is a grid game. This game, you know you know what it is if you've played Grid 1. It's it's not meant to be full simulation. It's not meant to be an eye racing. It's meant to be a fun, motorsport-heavy game. Um, and also, you know, it looks great, and you'll never get bored of it, and the great it's got a great damage physics. Uh, I've done a video on my channel where I showed off crash physics, and it is pretty bonkers. I mean, you can have bonnets flying everywhere. You can have uh, taillights uh, kind of smashed in. You can have the, the rear completely taken off. It is a really nice crash, uh, crash physics engine. Uh, but onto the cons, well, the AI aren't too clever. They constantly break earlier than you, causing you to smash into them. Uh, especially, I've found, um, even playing the review copy, this is based off the review copy. I have done uh, some videos on the preview copy, but I've now got the review copy. So this is pretty much nearly full retail, basically. And uh, it's a bit worrying that they still break a bit earlier, like especially like in Malaysia, they break way too early into the first corner, and you can just smash into them. And also, sometimes, they just kind of, almost nearly take you out because they're trying to overtake you but you know you don't want to give up the place so you know you're kind of forced to either take them out or you have to take yourself out in terms of you know they're going to spin you so this can all be avoided though if once you know it you can drive around it it's sort of like the f1 games codemasters make as well the ai maybe aren't a bit too clever but you know it's a bit difficult in racing to really get truly clever ai that know where everything is there's a lot going on i mean there's like at least 10 plus cars on the track so you've got to give them credit for doing their best um but yeah i thought that was the only thing that wasn't really too up the par in the game um but once you're past lap one then it's a bit less of an issue but that was um uh, one of the major cons uh, i found in the game but apart from that it's really good and also if you're playing online that's definitely not an issue because all of you are racing online um, and it's player to player and finally, some of the cars can be a bit awkward uh, to handle sometimes. This is the final con. Uh, you know, taking some of the touring cars or endurance cars as an example. From time to time, while under braking and turning to a corner, the car just feels so light. There's no kind of uh, evident feeling of weight. And it randomly just starts to lose the rear or front when, you know, you're really not feeling anything from the, from the controller or even when I've tried it on a wheel, you don't really feel any feedback to tell you you're about to lose the rear or front. And that, that needs to be a case because you can't feel weight, obviously, in the game. So you need some sort of kind of vibration to tell you you're about to lose the rear. Um, but there doesn't seem to be much mechanical grip sometimes with these cars. And at times it just feels like um, they're making it overly hard so that unseasoned races, people who don't know a lot about cars or the way they feel will think that this is simulation because it's so hard to drive. But in reality, they're just making it unrealistic a bit because it's too hard to drive and it's, you know, it's way too hard than an actual car is to drive. Um, so I think that will be the final con really. Um, you know, it's not too much of a bad case in open wheelers, but at times, you know, not every corner, but a few times when it's a high speed corner in a touring car, it does feel a bit loose on the rear and way too easy to lose the car.
but the final verdict is a good one because at the end of the day this game is very fun to play if you enjoy motorsport in all forms you will enjoy this because it's got a variety of motorsport for you to play with and the career mode will vastly interest you in terms of personal tastes and tearing up and you know a lot like grid one if you enjoyed that game and you know the racing online also has um has a great potential for league races and rivalries online via the code masters racing net system um, you know, overall, as I said, the game is very fun. It's got a few cons here and there, as I mentioned, but it's got some big, big pros. And, you know, all in all, it's a game that is not set out to be a racing simulator. It's, be, it's set out to be a grid game that brings it back to its roots of grid one. And it does that great. And it is just an all-round fun game. Um, so, yeah, that has been the uh, sort of review and should you buy grid autosport video. If you guys did enjoy this video, do give it a like. If you found it helpful, comment below. Tell me if you did. And uh, ask me any other questions you want about this game. Subscribe if you're new for even more motorsport gaming content weekly. We've got four videos a week of motorsport sport content so i hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day i've been Aravan. i'll see you guys next time and happy racing if you're going to get grid order support on the june 27th